You know, every now and again you get these cases that just kind of, I don't know, they, they stick with you, they bother you. Most of the cases that I've done on this channel, most of them are ones that bother me in some sort of way. Not the high profile ones. It's the ones you don't haven't heard of. Like OJ, yeah, I mean the victims, certainly that bothers me, but it doesn't intrigue me as much because there's not a lot there to be intrigued by. I mean, I know who did it and it's pretty self-explanatory the why is there but some of these other ones and this one last night um, that I did of this little third grader uh, it's the case of Jessica Lunsford who was nine years old and she was abducted from her home in Homosassa Florida this happened on February 24th, 2005. And as I was researching this case, um, again, everything's a teachable moment, right? You can learn from everything. That's how I look at things. So when you look at this horrible crime, there's some things that you can relate to other crimes. Let's say Idaho. Okay. What can we learn from past crimes that we can relate to? to this Idaho crime. Well, in Jessica's case, again, she was nine years old, she was in third grade, and she had gone to bed, she had lived in a mobile home, like uh, park, and her dad had come home, went back out with his girlfriend and spent the night away from the trailer but she was there with her grandparents. They put her to bed. He comes home at five in the morning to get ready for work. Here's her alarm going off, but doesn't think much of it. Then eventually he goes and checks and she's gone. Immediately people, searchers, rescuers, everything, police are called in, can't find her. Canines are brought in, can't find her. She's gone for three weeks until police put together uh, the puzzle and find out that a registered uh, sex offender takes her, kidnaps her from her home. He eventually leads them to her body, which is 65 yards from her front door when where she was abducted. And she was buried. Now, the worst part about this is that this... piece of garbage... And it's funny as I use that word because that's exactly how the sheriff described him to the newspapers that day as a piece of trash. Uh, now, I wouldn't have done that if I was a police chief or a sheriff publicly. Um, but certainly on a, a channel like this, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, this registered offender was living... 65 yards away. Now, what's the teachable moment here? Well, let, let's go into his confession, okay? And then we'll go into the teachable moments. His confession is, I was high on crack cocaine, living in this trailer with, like, his stepsister, her husband, and two other people. They were all arrested. And they were arrested because they, it's not sure whether they knew f that he had kidnapped and killed her, but they certainly obstructed justice. Now, if you look at the picture, I'm not one to judge people, okay? And I've said this many times, and I have friends from all walks of life. Uh, like Albert Einstein said, you could be the president of the university to the janitor and I'll treat you all the same and I 
really, really, really abide by that. Um, I don't make fun of people. I don't do, I don't bully. I don't do any of that. And, and I refrain from judging people for the most part until I came to this case, I think, last night. And I've seen all these people living in this trailer. and All of them have been arrested. They were our drug users. Uh, all, they were not from the better part of society. Yet, hey, I, I've met many people live in trailer parks, trailer homes that are great people. So it's not that. And it's not even that they were probably uh, halfway inbred because that's how they look. I don't judge people by that. Um, I am friends with a lot of the Amish community around me, okay? And I can tell by looking at them that they may have crossed family tree at one point in time as well. So I'm not judging that they are, you know, trashy, drug-fueled, inbred slap dicks that covered up this murder of this poor nine-year-old girl gets me very irritated when I think about it because as a professional I try not to let that stuff get to you emotionally it's just it's your job you look at facts you're unbiased this and that yet when the police put this all together and arrested um, this ass clown, John Cooey, who was 46 years old at the time, um, for this murder, he confessed. Now, during his confession, is I didn't think my anger could get any higher. But he, uh, he says he was high on crack cocaine, had his eye on her seen her before went in sliced the back door an l shape in the screen unlocked the door went right to her bedroom told her that her they were going to see her dad she didn't resist he left with her and he held her captive 65 yards away in a trailer for three days and you can imagine the things that he did to her now imagine you're in this small trailer, thin walls, with four other people, five other people, whatever it was, living here. None of them said they knew anything. Her fingerprints were later found in his bedroom closet. Her blood was found on the mattress, um, along with his uh, gut juice. Um, and after three days... After the police were there looking for her, looked on the outside of the trailer, uh, you know, anybody see her? No, no, no. Uh, he kills her, okay? Now, how he does this makes me think that he's probably one of the most despicable people on this planet. And what he did was, according to him, and the evidence seems to bear this out, he says that, well, I, I couldn't find it in me to kill her. So what I did was I asked her to get in the trash bag that I was going to take her back over to her house, but I didn't want anybody seeing her. So she fell for this, got in the trash bag voluntarily. I put another trash bag over, tied it, and I had, bear, or I had dug a, a grave for her right outside the trailer, a hole. And I put her in it. And when I read the confession, the police asked her, well, was she dead when you put her in that hole? He said, no, she was alive. I buried her alive and she suffered. Now, when they recovered the body, she had two little fingers sticking out of that two plastic bags as if she was trying to get out. It's very hard sometimes to stay professional when you hear things like that. Um, 
it's not often that I can say, well, I'm glad. And maybe, you know, I was always taught, never act on emotion. And that advice from my father has done me well in my 48 years. I try not to. Always sleep on it. Never make a decision when you're emotional. Never speak out when you're emotional. And I was just going to say this, you know, hey, I never wish anybody to die. For the most part. <laughs> I'm glad this guy did. He died in prison. Um, is there anything that we could have learned from him? No. I don't think he's a serial offender. Um, but he had that. Obviously, his urge, he was a registered sex offender. He had done this before, not killed anybody that we know. But his confession provided a lot of insight. Now, the teachable moment in this. Number one, when people say, it can't be anybody close to that house. This guy was 65 yards away. Number two, they brought canine dogs in to follow her scent. You're telling me these dogs cannot find her 65 yards away? She didn't get in a car. She walked with this individual right into another trailer that was 65 yards away. Teachable moment. You can't rely on dogs. I know dog handlers will be all over me for this. And I told you my experience with dogs. I've seen them train and find cocaine 200 yards away that I buried on a training exercise. Let them go in the woods. They find it. But I've never seen them work good on cadaver dogs, um, scent dogs. I just, I'm sure they're success stories. But there's a lot of failures too. These dogs couldn't find her 65 yards away. Come on now. A freshly dug grave outside their trailer, 65 yards away from where the crime scene is, and no one sees that. Now, granted, it was three days later, but still, you're not still looking around for clues and somebody see a pile of dirt and say, hey, what's this? I mean, I, 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 everything's 2020. I hate Monday morning quarterback, and it, they missed it, whatever. It's just such a heartbreaking case. Uh. All right, what else did I have written down about here? Teachable moment, Idaho. You know what was inside that trailer when this guy broke in, abducted this girl, and walked her out? Guess what they had? A dog. So all of you people that said, well, it had to be somebody in Idaho that they knew because the dog didn't bark. That's asinine. That's not true. It's simply, it's not a fair statement. You can't make that. In this case, they had a dog. The guy said, no, I didn't know the dog. He said, but it didn't bark. Well, there you go. Direct correlation to the Idaho murders. Teachable moment. <laughs> the sheriff, I have that here, the quote after he was arrested. He's a crackhead. Truly a piece of trash. However funny that is, and probably such a good quote, I don't know if I would have said that. And I believe that sheriff was acting on emotion when speaking to the press. Um, although, true. And he has every right to say it. Just me as, you know, I wouldn't have said that to the press. So that is the case of Jessica Lunsford. The picture of her, I don't know why, that smile or something, it just uh, resonated with me. And uh, I just wanted to share a teachable moment with you. And also, you know, so that case, I never heard of it. And you probably never heard of it either, unless you're from Florida. Um... All those other people that were arrested, and I use the term people loosely, um, it, it, it's, they're, they are, they, they are, I'm glad they were held accountable, okay? I'm not going to stoop to name calling or anything like that. And we have a case like that in my area where 
this lesbian couple are together. I think they're married. And one of them's mother lived there with them and maybe her boyfriend all in a trailer with two children. I forget the ages, but they were like maybe eight and nine, we'll say. Something like that. Two girls. They starved these girls to death and killed them. Tortured them. Put them in hot water. Made them stand in a corner for eight hours. Fed them like one pee a day. Clear child abuse, neglect case beyond anything you can ever imagine. Buried them both in the backyard. Um, they were arrested and they are in jail waiting the death penalty. These two uh, were arrested. The mom of one of the, the lesbians was just released on supervised bail. I saw that in the paper. Now she didn't do anything per se, but she didn't do anything. She knew about the abuse and she kept her mouth shut. Is she just as guilty as the other two? I don't know if as guilty, but certainly guilty and guilty by law. Should be, she be out on supervised bail? Um, you know, that made a lot of people angry. And uh, I understand. So that has correlations to this case because of all the slap dicks that were in this trailer where Jessica was being held captive who said they didn't see anything, didn't know anything, but yet they took the offender after he murdered her to a bus station, bought him a bus ticket, and sent him out of town where police ended up catching him. So I think they knew something, okay? And now I hope they were held accountable to the highest degree. Bye.